If you're a Star Trek fan, you wouldn't necessarily expect that it would make for good material for a first-person shooter. After all, Star Trek is always about kind of, you know, taking, looking for the diplomatic solution to your various problems with the various aliens, uh, rather than just blasting away at them with your photon torpedoes and, and your phasers and things like that. Uh, but uh, that's why Star Trek Voyager Elite Force, when it came out uh, back in 2000, turned out to be really a pleasant surprise. Uh, it was this first-person shooter based on uh, the Voyager TV series uh, that was really good just as a first-person shooter. Even if you had no liking for Star Trek, uh, you'd still have to recognize that, that the game just played well and, and was fun and had a lot of kind of exciting, uh, surprising events to it. And if you were a Star Trek fan, you, you'd also notice that it stayed uh, true to the material and did a good job, you know, justifying everything uh, about the setting and about the plot and so forth. So and now, uh, several years later, along comes a sequel to, to uh, Voyager Elite Force, though it's conspicuously missing uh, the Voyager part of the title. It's just Star Trek Elite Force 2. And the game, by and large, uh, is, is a very good follow-up uh, to, to its predecessor and, and does you know, the same things well that its predecessor did and, and likewise includes a good solid single player campaign as well as a, a good uh, kind of fully featured multiplayer mode. In Elite Force 2 you once again play as Alex Monroe who looks a bit like John Travolta. You no longer have the option to play as a female main character uh, which was one of the little cool touches in the first game. And you're, you're stuck playing as Alex and he's the leader of, of the Hazard team, uh, basically this uh, high-powered uh, crack team of of people with uh, rather large Federation weapons uh, that, that's designed to kind of go in and clean up when your standard Star Trek away team can't handle the job. Early on in the game, after a particularly dangerous assignment, the, the Hazard team is disbanded. They're, they're kind of uh, spread out and, and uh, uh, Alex Monroe is, is relegated to training duty and he's kind of uh, now stuck teaching at the Starfleet Academy, teaching uh, Klingons how to uh, how to better kill people and stuff like that. Uh, but he catches the attention of good old Jean-Luc Picard and, and uh, Picard reassembles uh, the, the Hazard team on, on the Enterprise. So now you're operating off of the Enterprise under, under Picard's command, uh, although uh, good old Tuvok is back uh, to lead you and kind of direct your team through its various missions. And so stationed on the Enterprise, you'll proceed to take on these uh, numerous dangerous assignments. Many of them involve killing these uh, kind of bug-like uh, alien type things. You'll find out exactly what they are and, and who's behind them and, and things like that over the course of the game's story. The story is actually quite good. It, it, there's, there's more story here than you'd find in a, in a typical first-person shooter. Uh, it's told through uh, cinematic cutscenes that, that look pretty decent. Uh, this game is using the, the, the Quake 3 Arena engine and you know it, it's, it's getting to be pretty long in the tooth, but um, Star Trek Elite Force 2, you know, looks looks very good, uh, even even by the high standards of, of shooters. So so the various characters in the game do look quite good, and the environments are sort of convincing Star Trek style locations. And, and you won't just be crawling through you know different ship corridors, although there is a lot of that. You'll also uh, be in some outdoor environments and and more. The campaign follows the sort of formula that's become pretty common for first-person shooters, meaning that it's kind of a half action game and half roller coaster ride. You know, every every new mission you go into just has a lot of stuff happening uh, as you proceed through, and and the gameplay is pretty linear, uh, which isn't a bad thing because it means you're not getting stuck and uh, generally not looking for the next place you're supposed to be going. Uh, there's just a, a lot of variety to be found in the campaign, so even though it's not a particularly long game, um, th there's still just a lot to do, and it's jam packed with with stuff, really. Um, it, it goes from, you know, kind of the standard uh, shooting of various aliens using various weapons on down to solving puzzles using your tricorder and, and uh, scanning the environment using your tricorder and stuff like that. The puzzle elements aren't, aren't difficult and basically just make for a nice change of pace. The actual combat in Elite Force 2 is good, but it isn't great. Uh, the, the AI for both your, your friendly squad and, and the enemies uh, leaves something to be desired. Your friends will often kind of run right into your line of fire and you'll shoot them in the back, but they won't really mind. Uh, meanwhile, enemies just kind of know how to dodge from side to side, but uh, generally they'll just run headlong into you. And perhaps that helps explain why so many of the enemies in the game are just these kind of stupid insect things that where it seems to make sense that they just kind of 
barrel headlong into you, but you know, it's not necessarily all that fun to, to be shooting at these uh, mindless types of opponents. And, and the, the arsenal of weapons in the game, though, though there's a lot to choose from, uh, none of them really feel particularly powerful, and uh, they're all just kind of these energy-type weapons um, that, that uh, are, are effective but aren't really surprising or, or seem to pack that much of a punch. Still, the game is tightly paced, and it tells an original Star Trek storyline and, and just uh, has a lot to it. So if, if you're a fan of Star Trek or just a fan of shooters in general, you'll enjoy this campaign for what it has to offer. Elite Force 2 also has a fully featured multiplayer mode uh, where you've got deathmatch and team deathmatch, although it's called hollow match here. Uh, you've also got capture the flag and, and a mode called bomb diffusion where uh, there's a bomb at the center of the map and both teams uh, first have to get the bomb and then try to plant it in the opposing team's base. Uh, there are also all these uh, little custom variants that, that, you can, uh, that you can use to affect the CTF game. Uh, you, you can uh, enable options like uh, one-hit kills and, and um, like a specialty system where, where you choose a character class, kind of like Team Fortress. Uh, so, so there's a lot to the multiplayer, but again, uh, you know, since the weapons aren't necessarily the most satisfying, and since you very well may have another first-person shooter that you're currently playing, uh, Elite Force 2's multiplayer won't necessarily get you to give up on, you know, what you've already got going on, because it doesn't necessarily do anything that different or better than what we've seen before, but, you know, that mostly just speaks to the, the incredibly high standards of this particular genre of gaming. So in the end, Elite Force 2 is just a good, solid game, uh, no matter if you're a Star Trek fan or not. It, it will appeal just as well to, to Star Trek fans as it will to first-person shooter fans, uh, who, who will agree that it just uh, does a good job with the material and, and uh, presents you, you know, a, lot of, a, a lot of fun and variety over the course of its campaign and, and does a pretty good job with its multiplayer as well. So especially if you like the first Elite Force game, uh, it's certainly worth checking out Elite Force 2.